General rule of thumb, and there are some caveats we'll mention in a moment, but our general rule of thumb is that the UI actor is the one that really needs the on, and then the one that ought to be on the main thread wherever possible. There's an exception. The exception here is that certain APIs, those for media security, device capabilities, and identity, are only available on the main thread today. We think that's a bug, uh, and we've been talking to some Chrome engineers about exposing these kind of APIs in a worker and somewhere else, but that's just not the world we live in today, so for now, that's a restriction. Yeah. And tools, not rules. So you might be thinking, ah, I should move all my actors away from the main thread. We'll get to that. But the thing is, if you've got a really chatty actor that needs to talk to the UI actor, you might want to leave it alongside the UI actor on the main thread, because as Jason and Shelby were talking about earlier, there is a cost to the thread hop, and that might be more expensive than um, just sending a message and just keeping the actor alongside the UI actor. Okay. So basically, if you want to do that, just measure and see what the impact is. Exactly. So, the location independence. For all that notwithstanding, imagine we were back here. We started with our uh, four actors, and they're all on the main thread, which is probably where we put them by default. We're sort of saying, you might want to look at it more like this. And you might be thinking, why did they say 
not main thread. Surely they just meant web workers. And we kind of did, um, because in, in most cases when we build these apps, web workers do feature heavily. We do move uh, quite a lot of our actors to web workers, especially if they're non-chatty. But not quite. So we actually think, or have tried, that it's sometimes very, very useful to run an actor, for example, on the server side. And that is kind of an interesting jump to make because it allows you to incorporate your backend into the architecture of your entire app. It is just another actor in the system. And as a matter of fact, the game that you've been playing all day, and it totally has no bugs at all whatsoever, is actually written in this model. So every player that's playing is an actor. The admin panel that the MCs use to control the app is an actor. The presentation view, just another actor. And then the Firebase storage, shared, shared actor that's running on the server side. Right? Now, interestingly, the, the mechanism by which they chat using the hookup and lookup can be anything. It could be fetch, it could be a web socket. Uh, it really, really doesn't matter. It's a Firebase database. Yeah, so long as they can talk, these actors can talk, and they've got a, a way of sending messages to one another, you're all set. So, back to our original question. Did we actually help with rush hour? Would this actually help? Well, let's review. So one thing that we definitely did achieve is that we are kind of making it less likely to have big chunks of uninterruptible JavaScript and more little chunks where the browser can stop it and it and show a frame. So that's definitely one advantage that we have. The location independence. Hopefully, some of our actors can be run successfully away from the main thread. Hopefully, it's like fewer cars on the road at rush hour. That's good for everybody, typically. And as a result, a lot of work that can happen in an unexpected way, if you're processing a big API response, something that can happen in the worker and not affect your main thread from going into jank mode. There are some other benefits uh, that Surma, Tim, and I have noticed as well uh, working in this particular pattern. One is better testing. Um, the kind of area of ownership, it's very, it's, it's easier, not always very easy, but it's easier to look at an actor and go, oh, well, I know what you should do, and you've got an on message that I can call, and I can make sure that you do the right thing. So the testing seems to become a little bit easier. Yeah, off on the other side, you can mock another actor by just implementing messages that that actor needs to receive, and not do the actual work, but just send pre-recorded messages back. You get the clear separation of concerns. Uh, which again, it's just a, 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 it helps it, it helps you in terms of uh, maybe dividing the work with your teammates, or even just deciding for yourself. You know, which actually needs to be responsible for this part of the system. And you get the code splitting because you have actors that can be hooked up to the system at any point in time. Really, it allows you to split them up and load them lazily. You can just import them when you need them. Yep, that's good. Good. <laughs> and bring your own framework. If you want to use a particular uh, library or framework, you can. This is, it's not that you have to, there's not a prescriptive way. If you want to use some one thing, use it. Great. Now, there are some considerations uh, in this world, in this setup that we've described. One is active performance challenges. If you imagine your UI actor, imagine it uh, decides to run long and just be not very yieldy you still have that problem. It's no different to a process or an application in an operating system deciding it's going to hog the CPU, right? I mean, this is, this is not going to go away. Uh, we do think that the scheduler API that Jason and Shubby mentioned in the previous talk is a huge part of this story because it's a great way for individual actors to start breaking their work up into smaller chunks. You may also be sitting there going, I'm not sure I could actorize my blog. And we would agree. It's not necessarily for all use cases. This works really well when you've got apps, and in particular apps where you think, actually, yeah, I can, I can ring fence, I can mark off particular parts of this application, and I can have some kind of owner for it. That's where it works really well. And there's definitely a different mental model to this. As I said, there, it kind of shifts the center of the universe away from the UI framework into many center pieces, all the actors just communicating. So it definitely took us a time to build an intuition for where do we draw the line, what becomes an actor, what is just part of an already existing actor, what kind of messages should we send, how granular should this entire setup be. Uh, so if it seems weird at first, if you're playing around with this, that is kind of to be expected. It's a very different way of architecturing a web app. So that was the rush out of it. That future facing stuff like the VR, AR, and so on, we have some thoughts there too. Watch this.
So you were talking about actors before, and I want to talk about cameras, and the reason, the reason I want to talk about cameras is because it all plays into that story, right? So okay. if you take one of these lenses before yeah. I drop it, because I don't want to. Um, your, modern, yeah. your modern camera has two bits. The camera body, which is the thing that kind of holds the state, whether you're shooting in JPEG or RAW. Whether it's you're like the business logic. It knows how to pick the picture and how to store it and does all that. Yep, uh, whether you're shooting video, or taking photos, whether you are also focused manual focus. You get the idea. Uh, similar to like a web app, right? That's the sort of state of what's going on. But you've got different lenses for different tasks. So that one would be something like a uh, portrait lens. Yeah. This one might be a wide angle take something of a landscape. Yeah. As long as we make sure that the mounts are compatible, which I guess in actual work means that they speak with the same messages to each other. Yes. So the messages that they send are really important. They're sort of standardized. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and everybody kind of plays to that same data contract. Other than that, you can do what you like. Plug it in. Off you go. Last video, I promise. Yeah. So, camera lenses. Why camera lenses? How does that apply to this story? When we talked about this earlier, I think very naturally we would have thought of Dom. Dom. We'd have thought of, in the chess game, we'd have thought of this version. But there's a freedom that you get from a UI actor that it can, as long as it can speak the right messages, it can be implemented in different technologies. So you could have a different actor that does 3D. And now you get that. It just has to send the same messages as the DOM version, the standard DOM version. Or maybe one for XR, similarly.
Thank you.